what's up everybody? I am here aboard Sailcat Nadia here in the Bahamas and I wanted to take some time to showcase some of my good friends and show you guys a truly unique travel experience that is unlike any other. For those of you that don't know, I'm an avid sailor and I love the doors for travel that sailing opens up. I've learned a lot of what I know about sailing from one of my good buddies, co-owner and fellow traveler, Brenton Neville. He and his partner Danielle have gone all in on this 47 foot catamaran and are offering truly unique charters here in the Caribbean. And I cannot wait to give you guys insight on the experiences that they offer. I'll give you guys a full tour of Nadia and let Brenton and Danielle dive into what sets them apart from other sailing charters and hopefully convince you to book a trip with them. I've spent the last two and a half weeks in the Bahamas aboard Nadia and I wanted to show you guys what it would be like when you arrive on the first day. A short dinghy ride from the meetup point to the vessel and the journey begins. Hey, what's up guys? Up, up. Welcome back aboard, buddy. Yeah. This line for you. Sweet. Ah, oh, it's I'm good to see you. Nadia. Yeah, it's good to see you guys. Welcome. Thank, thank you so much, Danielle. <laughs> torpedo yeah. says welcome as well. Oh, hi Torpedo. My bandana. Hey, good boy. I'm the best boy. Ha. Huh. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for having me aboard. Absolutely. What would you like to see today? Let's just go see full experience of everything that you guys offer and All right. uh, let's just get a full tour of the boat. Uh, let's see, let's start outside. So Nadia is a 47 foot leopard. Uh, we picked her up in St. Martin almost exactly a year ago. Uh, it's been both of our dreams since we got together to have a catamaran and offer charters and now we're here. This is our very large cockpit. We've got room for probably, I don't know, 10 people to sit right here. Danielle's got her nice little flowers out. She loves picking beach plants and putting them around the boat. This is the helm station. This is where I'm primarily at, but if you're a guest who likes to sail, I'm more than happy to let you get up here at the helm and do your thing. You can pull ropes, you can do whatever you want. Uh, we really like to cater our trips to whatever the guests want. Some people want to come aboard and they want to learn to sail. They want to learn how to use the water maker, how to do all that stuff. And that's awesome because I love to teach about it. And I love talking about boats. Other people just want to lay around and drink cocktails and listen to music while we sail the boat. And that's totally fine too. It's completely up to you. No two charters are the same because there are no guests that are the same. So if you look up aboard, above here, you will see that we have a lot of fishing gear. Uh, we are a seafood hunter-gatherer based charter. That means that if you're coming aboard looking for USA Steak Buffet, you're on the wrong boat. We're gonna get in the water every day that we can and we're gonna get you lobster, grouper, lionfish, mojaro, snapper. We're gonna hunt our butts off to make sure that we can grill for you on the back of the boat over here for sunset. Um, with that being said, if you want us to grill you a steak, we're all for it, we will do it. But seafood, way to go. This is our beautiful new grill that we added. Haven't even broken in yet. We've been using a different grill on the way over. So lots of fish fits on there. As you can see, Nadia has nice low sugar scoops. And on this side over here, there is a ladder that you can easily get in and out of the water, onto the paddle boards, onto the kayak. Makes it super simple. So let's go forward. Nadia has nice wide decks, lots of handholds for you to walk on. We have six paddle boards. We have four right here on the rail, and then we have another two in the lazarette that we can blow up. If you're not into paddle boarding, but you still want to go paddle, we've got the crystal clear kayak, which is awesome in the Bahamas because you can see everything below you. Danielle is up here taking advantage of our two large trampolines. We could fit all six guests up here easily. We've got two bean bags that we keep up here, but you can move them anywhere on the boat. I like to go sit up on the very top by all the solar panels. Uh, you've got a good view of the boat. Speaking of solar panels, not only are we a seafood based charter because we believe that it is more sustainable to hunt and gather food for our guests than it is to pay to have it all shipped in on big reefer ships. So our other sustainability practices that we try to adhere to are using solar energy for most everything. Sometimes when it's cloudy, we have to turn the generator on, but when possible, we use 4,000 watts of solar to run everything from the air conditioners in the cabin, 
So the water maker, ice machine, everything that you're using on board Nadia is almost exclusively ran off solar. Someday I will be able to say exclusively, but just gotta get there yet. Well, should we uh, head inside? We've replaced most of the standing rigging. Our good buddy Anthony at Onboard Rigging said that our cap shrouds were almost new, so it would be stupid to replace them, so we did not. So moving inside, it's a little bit dirty in here right now because I was cutting wood last night. Sorry about that. Danielle has done an amazing job decorating Nadia. Uh, what would you say your vibe is? Jungle? I was just going to say. She's going for the jungle I'm vibe. Trying to be in the jungle until we're actually in the jungle. Yeah, and then you'll feel like a poser. So we've got two ice machines in here. That way, if you're a drinker that wants a lot of ice in your drinks all day, we'll turn on the second one. Usually one's just fine. We've got soda stream, air fryer to bake things. We've got three refrigerators and a freezer. We have propane stove over here. We also have induction. Someday we'll probably switch to just induction, but one day at a time, folks, one day at a time. Electric coffee slash tea maker. We brew our own kombucha on the boat. If you're a kombucha drinker, we've got some good home brew going. We have a full library. Um, as you walk down into every single room, you'll have books and books and books. So if you're a reader, don't worry about bringing stuff. We've got all kinds of stuff on here for you to read. Don't take our books, I'll tell you that. <laughs> this isn't a book exchange. Yes, this isn't a book exchange, people. So the, the there's two sides of the boat for guests. This cabin back here is ours. This cabin up in the front is a guest cabin. Um, they're the same on both sides. So we're just gonna only walk you through that side. All right, so. We will go into the aft cabin first. So coming down, we've got our food supplies. We try, I should say Danielle, our excellent chef, cooks almost exclusively from scratch. That means when you come aboard Nadia, we're not buying you cheap bread from the grocery store. We're making you fresh baked focaccia, fresh baked pita chips, uh, tortillas. It's all going to be fresh made on the boat. Not only is it sustainably sourced when we can, or hunted when we can, but it's fresh, it's good food. Daniel does an amazing job. So coming down into the cabin, every cabin has queen beds with ample storage everywhere. Uh, lots of light, lots of fans. There is air conditioning in every single cabin. Although in the islands, let's be real, you don't really have to use it that often. So in here in the heads, we have saltwater plush toilets. Very nice because there's no pumping. I know a lot of you that are used to boats. You gotta pump, it sucks. Uh, we just replaced all of the shower faucets. So you've got a nice shower faucet up here. We stock the boat for you with all the linens, all the towels, all the pillows, everything you need. You really only need to bring your swimsuits. Um, if you're bringing sunscreen, it needs to be reef safe. That's something we're super strict about. Like we do not allow non-reef safe sunscreen on the boat because the reef is very important to us and we're not gonna take part in destroying it but all of our soaps and conditioners we have for you. You don't have to bring them, bring them if you like, but if you do bring them, please be aware that they need to not have phosphates because we use all natural soaps, free fair trade soaps and conditioners that are good for the environment because it all just washes right back out. So going forward, as, as I said before, the other side is exactly the same. They're mirrored, so we're not gonna go ahead and show you every single room. So this is the layout for the forward cabin. Uh, if you're a person that has more bags, you're probably going to want to be in the sport cabin because it has an extra little spot for here to put bags. Another queen bed inside here and plenty of storage, plenty of lights and fans. And then another bathroom. Yeah, pretty nice. There's lots of room in here. Uh, at first, I didn't know if I would like having the shower and the toilet in the same spot, but it's it works out really well. I like it. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for giving me such an awesome tour of Nadia. Um, again, being here on the boat the past two and a half weeks has been really, really fun. Uh, so I have been very familiar with uh, everything that's been going on here. But for everyone that's interested in booking a charter with you guys, I wanted to ask you guys some questions to kind of, you know, give them some insight on who you guys are and what kind of separates you guys apart from uh, other sailing charters, yeah. uh, not only in the U.S., but I guess here in the Caribbean, more specifically. So tell us a little bit about yourselves and 
what got you into this endeavor? Um, well, when Danielle and I first started dating, <laughs> we were building tiny houses and vans for people. And we knew that it just, you didn't love it. Like, in mm. fact, I think you hated it sometimes. I didn't hate it. <laughs> but I didn't love it either. It was, we were doing it for way too cheap and not really making any money and just breaking even. And we knew that we wanted to do something else. We missed the boat. And we, we exactly, when we were going for the boat, all we wanted to do was be back to the boat. And at that time we had a 50 foot monohull, which was a great boat, right of passage. You right were passage. Yeah, Let's go, right of passage. <laughs> but it just, it wasn't right for chartering. And um, so we, we knew that if we weren't gonna do it now, we weren't gonna ever do it. And so we just kind of decided, let's just go for it because I, I personally was tired of working for people. Absolutely. And treated like not the hell you. And with chartering, you know, we might get those bad guests, but at least we're on the ocean and snorkeling and sailing with a bad guest. So, but don't be a bad guest. <laughs> but yeah, so we just we kind of went all in. You know, it's one of those things that you never feel ready. Like you never feel like, oh, now's the good time to do this. You're you're never gonna be ready. And I think we. Yeah. Agreed with that. That's like we just we got to go for it. It's if it's not gonna happen now It's not gonna ever happen But I wanted a boat where we could come in and just redo everything in the first year and that's kind of what we did We tore almost every single wire out of here We loaded it up with solar loaded it up with batteries 4,000 watts of solar 3,200 amp hours of batteries uh, We completely went through the rig um, Basically if it could have broke all the pumps all the plumbing everything has been replaced so it's basically an old boat, an old hull. It's a 2003 with all new systems on it. And uh, it looks really good. Thank you. Thank it you. Looks we still need a paint job. So next question would be, why did you guys choose a catamaran over the classic monohull look? I don't know. I've always just been attracted to them. Yeah. The comfort. I, don't, I love the look of a classic monohull. I do, especially the teak inside and all that. But especially for guests too. Like I had, you know, we've had some friends and family visit on the golf store for years and as much as everybody loved it, some people struggled with comfort, mm -hmm. you say? Yeah. A little more rolly, huh? Yeah. 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 Well, I always like to say when we were bringing this boat home from St. Martin, the time that I knew that we made the right choice with the catamaran over a model hole for chartering was we were in 12 foot following seas and we were eating on China and we were <laughs> drinking with glass. And you can never do that on a model hole. And it's just, the comfort for guests is, okay. it's day and night. It's not even the same thing. Um, so if you're looking for comfort, if you're looking for space, space but honestly, I love the way it sails too. I'm not gonna lie, like I thought I wouldn't like the way that it sails compared to our Gulf Star, but there's something great about a, a cat that sails well. Now, the modern cats, first of all, we couldn't afford a modern cat. <laughs> but second of all, if we could, I think I still would have went with a classic cat because they sail so much better. They're not built like apartments. They're built like sailboats mm -hmm. that are comfortable, not an apartment that happens to kind of sail. It's the bread and butter, it's sailing. It right? is, it is, yeah. It's, yeah. If you want a hotel, <clears throat> get a hotel. Yep. So can you tell us some of the experiences that you guys offer and what the guests can expect uh, when they book a trip with you guys? So as I mentioned in the walkthrough, we are a sustainability-based charter. We try to sail everywhere we go. We try to hunt for our food. We try to buy local produce. We try to make everything from scratch. Now, with that being said, we're not trying to force our views on anyone. Be just because we believe that we could all live a little bit more sustainably and a little bit more in tune with natural rhythm things doesn't mean you have to. If you want to come aboard and have steaks cooked you every single night, that's fine. But we don't include that in the charter. Uh, that's not included in the base price. What is included is a ton of snorkel gear, a ton of kayaks, paddle boards, uh, fishing gear. Very water-based. Very, very water-based. Like if you want to get in the water and have a water adventure or a sailing adventure, like that's what we're about. That being said, a lot of people like land stuff, which so does Torpedo, so mm -hmm. we do a lot of that too. We do, yep. Weather-dependent. It's very weather-dependent and it depends on the regions. So for instance, we're in Eleuthera now and it's more of a land-based area. There's lots of really cool shops, lots of cool restaurants, lots of cute little towns. Now, if you want to be in the water all the time, then definitely the Daniel Key Exuma area. That's where you want to be. That's where the Thunderbolt Grotto, sunken airplanes, 
mermaid statue, just tons of deserted islands with beautiful beaches, crystal clear water. Now if you want to blend between the two, we do Georgetown trips. Georgetown is a little bit more developed, it's still very much a small town by most people's standards, but it has a nice grocery store, it has a lot more restaurants and stuff like that, beach and hikes. lots and lots of beaches, and I mean just trails. miles upon miles of trails and yeah. beaches, and a nice protected harbor for sailing in, and good clear water. We'll be going to the Virgin Islands in the fall and next winter. And we're also doing 4th of July and Fantasy Fest trips in the Keys. Side note, get them into Fantasy Fest, go. I know a lot of people are pretty nervous sometimes about going out sailing, especially if they've not really been near the water or on the ocean much. Um, what would you say to those people who want to book a trip with you guys but are a little bit more hesitant about it because they're nervous about being on the water in the ocean? We get that a lot, yeah. actually. I think that most people, when they picture the ocean, they picture that near shore experience where there's big waves and it's really rough. The places where we do trips, they're on the not windy side of the island. They can see land. The and you can too. see land the whole time, if you want. Like, if you're one of those people that wants to sail to the next island 100 miles away, we'll do that. But the base trips that we do, it's not necessarily flat water, but it's so calm. Um, we're, we're not out in big wind, we're not out in big waves. We always have protected areas we can go sit if there is a storm that comes in. It's, it's nice and calm. Uh, it's not big waves. It's very, very nice. It's like swimming, it's like sailing around in a giant pool with really cool restaurants and beaches. <laughs> And turtles. Count me and in. And turtles, yeah. <laughs> Count me in. I know you guys kind of covered this already. What sets your guys' charters apart from some of the other sailing charters that some other people might have seen before? One thing I would say that, if I were to guess, is we play more of a role of like companion. Yeah, we're adventure than... buddies. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah, we're than... not your. We're we'll, we obviously cook your meals and clean the boat and all that <laughs> stuff. And we're when whatever you need, we're here. But I feel like we try to be more of like an adventure. Buddy yeah, and we try to be the the hosts that we would want. It's like right. an experience. It's an experience. More yeah. Than experience. A, yeah. Like I don't want somebody going in my room every morning and making my bed and folding my clothes. Like I don't like that. And so we're not doing that for people. We're going to be out here cooking you really good food and getting the toys ready for the adventures during the day. I, I think the food <laughs> is very different on our boat. Like I said, it's food is very, very important to us and good food is very important to us. And so I think maybe where I've seen a lot of other charters provisioning, they're just buying like lunch meats and like cheaper foods yep. because the food isn't really a priority. Like we're very much investing in quality ingredients and making sure that the food makes you feel good, not just full. And as a second endorsement, it does make you feel good. <laughs> it does. Good job, D. From an outsider perspective, um, I would say some of the things that I saw just from the past two and a half weeks being on here was all the fishing gear, you know, literally getting all of our protein by hunting and doing it the ethical way, sailing as much as possible, harnessing the power of the sun and the wind, um, and then obviously the massive solar panels on here to power the entire boat. I think that is absolutely amazing and it's really inspiring to see what can be done on different vessels, uh, not only in catamarans, but it can kind of give other people ideas for you know all types of boats, not even yeah. sailboats, yeah. you know, power boats if they really wanted to. I think that really sets you guys apart from the limited amount of different charters that I've seen. Yeah. But I gotta tell you, I haven't, I've not seen any boat with this amount of solar on it. Yeah. So I think that's uh, <laughs> I think that's already a big plus right there for you guys. So what's your guys' plans moving forward for Nadia? Which, what's the future for Nadia look like? I would say the next couple years we'll keep doing a rotation of the Caribbean and the Bahamas. I'd say for at least two or three years. Yeah. After that, who knows, maybe we'll start doing some stuff in the Pacific. We have a lot of repeat people that sail with us, and we, first of all, we're very thankful for all of you. And so I'd like it if every single year, people who maybe want to get a boat themselves could just come and charter a new island with us. Maybe at the beginning of the year, we'll go down to Grenada or St. Lucia or St. Martin. We love St. Martin. We'd like to just have a really diverse offering throughout the year. This year our season sold out, it's almost sold out, and it happened so fast that I think that uh, we'll do well with the next season. Do you think we'll get a bigger boat one day? Is that a goal or is it just... I mean, that's, that's my goal, is to run this one for three or four years, pay it off, 
and then sell it and use that as a down payment on probably like a 60 footer that way we can have a crew cabin because i would love to have wardo on yeah. board because roommates for life he's yeah. so fun <laughs> first of all he's an amazing captain and it's nice having somebody that i don't have to worry about while they're at the helm um but also because you're really good at guest interaction yeah. you're really good at like taking people out on their ventures and so i would love to just like be the engineer and be the main captain while like you took people on adventures and snorkeling while you made them awesome meals you know i think we could be a really good crew together if we had a really big boat we could hire people like wardo for some trips to do that while we would still run it primarily ourselves but whenever people wanted they could take on an adventure guide the next question that i'm sure is burning in everyone's mind is where can we book with you guys? Well, there's multiple ways to find us. We do a lot of stuff on Instagram and Facebook. Our Instagram is at SailNadia, and we post there daily. Send us a message there, get to know us, and uh, it's super easy to book with us. It's $1,000 down to book your trip. We are still far below the market price. We're happy just to have more people sail with us and have it be more available to more people. And we want it to not be so out of reach for the normal person because seeing these beautiful waters and experiencing this boating lifestyle shouldn't only be for super rich people yeah. if you want to see our updated dates all the time it's at sailnadia.com and then again i will make sure to put a link in the video description below so that you guys can visit their website and make contact with them and hopefully get your guys's great experience here in the caribbean with that i just want to say thank you guys so much for having me aboard as always it's been really awesome to be here these last two and a half weeks and i'm really excited for you guys and your new endeavor and for everything that is about to come down the road or on the water rather <laughs> um, you, and yeah, yeah you, i just want to say good luck thanks for having me on again and for all you guys watching thank you very much make sure to book a charter with these guys very good friends. You will not regret it. I promise you. So with that, I'm going to finish packing. I got to head to Nassau. No. So yeah, it's unfortunate, but I'll be back. Be You'll back. be seeing a lot more of both myself aboard and a lot more of Nadia. So thank you so much. Thanks for joining me here aboard Sailcat Nadia. Make sure to check the website in the description below so you can book your one-of-a-kind, unique sailing charter experience here in the Caribbean. And as always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel as it really helps the channel grow and helps me make more content like this for you guys. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.